Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKurash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. Starting with the Tabernacle of David, all right, as well as the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on. And that body is known as the remnant, all right, who were um, prophesied to awaken in the latter days as we are so that we can be heirs to the promise that was given unto Abraham, all right, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, who fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what the Bible is about, all right, our rise and fall, all right, and before we were Israelites, we were known as the sons of God, all right, who had fell, all right, and um, rebelled against the, the Most High, all right, and we've had a constant struggle, all right, um, and we have a lot of history, all right, but we're living in the time where the Heavenly Father is raising us up to restore us, all right, to our heavenly estate, all right, so that we no longer have to deal, all right, with the, with the flesh, all right, which has separated us because of sin, all right, separated us from our power, all right, so we're striving in these latter days to get back in good graces with our power, all right, so that through this grace period, we can be welcoming into the new covenant, all right, in which the law, statutes, and commandments will be written in our inward parts. All right, and from that point on, we will be good. All right, no other nation will partake in that covenant. All right, and the Israelites, under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, all right, is going to establish the throne of David. All right, and that is the kingdom of heaven. All right, that the Bible speaks of. So today, that's what I wanted to deal with, um, in which I've uh, went into this topic before, but uh, some knucklehead uh, came on to the uh, comment board, okay, spewing madness, okay, and um, his basis, and a lot of these guys' basis, all right, because you have a lot of deniers of the Messiah, okay, um, in which when you go into the Bible, their whole premise is cut. You know, you have the Torah only Israelites. You have the New Testament only Israelites. And, you know, when you start to ask these men questions, all right, um, the only thing that they can yell is that, you know, um, Yahweh Shah is an idol. We're idol worshipers. All right. But when you start to put the scriptures to these men, all right, um, you'll see that they're inept, they're, they're lacking in their understanding, and they don't have the spirit, all right, and prophecy, all right, escapes them, all right, they don't have the spirit of prophecy, all right, the volume of the book, you see, because there's a lot of prophecies in the Holy Scriptures, all right, that lean towards the Messiah, all right, the descendant of David that would come, all right, to establish David's throne. Now, the basis of a lot of of the arguments dealing with the throne of David, all right, um, stems from this quote, all right, and I'll get another quote that Jeremiah the prophet told to, all right, a uh, wicked ruler who was sitting on the throne of David at this time, all right, and he goes by the name of Jehoiakim, all right. Now, his uh, real name was Eliakim. All right, but Pharaoh Nico, all right, um, who at the time, pretty much they were um, coming against Jerusalem, all right, um, and uh, to give a little history, going back, you know, the, the last king that sat on the throne of David at that time who did good was Josiah, all right, in which he passed away, and then his sons, all right, and one of his son's sons, set all on the throne of David, all right, but it failed. And here's a prophecy that Jeremiah is prophesying to Jehoiakim, okay, which, you know, after Josiah, you had um, one of his younger sons, Jehoaz, I believe that's his name, who sat on the throne of David. Um, but um, 
that was only for a short time um, because of his rebellion. And then they set up uh, Jehoiakim, all right, whose name was changed to Jehoiakim. His original name was Eliakim, okay? And we're going to read about the final three kings who sat on the throne of David. And we want to give some insight and go into some scriptures to show you, all right, that there will be one that sits on the throne of David. All right, now starting here in Jeremiah 36, all right, uh, I'll start at Jeremiah 36 and 29. All right, this is um, pretty much Jeremiah speaking to Baruch, all right, who was his scribe. Now, Jeremiah is pretty much reasoning, all right, with uh, Jehoiakim, you know, telling him he's going to have to submit to the king of Babylon. All right, um, if they don't, this is going to happen. And they called him a sellout. You know, they threw him in jail. All right, because at this point, you know, um, Judea, Jerusalem, all right, Judah was pretty much sovereign. So they could, they had the right, you know, under their law and jurisdiction to put people in jail. So here it is, you have the king who was rebelling against the word of the prophet. Okay, and here's the words. Basically, they burnt the scrolls. They told Jeremiah he was a sellout, put him in jail. You can read all of that in Jeremiah, the 36th chapter. But let me just uh, go here, all right? It says, and thou shalt say unto Jehoiakim, all right, who is Josiah's son, okay? The king of Judah, thus saith the Lord, thou hast burned this roll, saying, why hast thou written therein, saying, the king of Babylon certainly come and destroyeth this land? Because Jeremiah was prophesying that the king of Babylon was going to uh, come and destroy, all right, the temple, all right, and do, and do what he did, all right, and they didn't want to listen, okay? It says, and shall cause to cease, all right, from thence man and beast, all right? It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, all right? And remember, his name was changed to Jehoiakim. His original name was Eliakim. Okay, and he was an idol worshiper. All right, he, he burnt the scrolls that Jeremiah wrote. All right, he did human sacrifice. Okay, tried to imprison Jeremiah. He was a complete, uh, 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 you know, he was he was he was going off. Okay, so here's what Jeremiah tells him. All right, therefore thus saith the Lord. Of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night to the frost. Okay, and I will punish his seed and his servants for their iniquity, and I will bring upon them, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and upon the men of Judah all the evil that I've pronounced against them. All right, now <clears throat> it says here. In verse 30, all right, therefore, thus saith the Lord, all right, of Jehoiakim, all right, Yahweh, king of uh, Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David. So what men do, okay, is when we talk about the throne of David being established, all right, by Yahawashai, which was prophesied, all right, by Nathan the prophet, okay, Psalm 72, Isaiah the ninth chapter. When you bring that up, they say, well, nobody's going to sit on the throne of David. And they'll bring this up, right? Now, once you start cutting them, okay, they'll go into scriptures and they'll say, well, David's going to sit on the throne of David and establish the throne. Uh, that's not according to prophecy. Now, David's throne will be established, all right? But who is going to be the one that establishes it so that it goes forever and ever and ever? All right, that Jehoshaphat, who was the one that sat on that throne so that it was forwarded for 40 years, all right, where Israel, as all 12 tribes being together, had peace. It was Solomon. But we'll get into that in just a minute. So let's get a few other points uh, dealing with Jehoiakim. All right, uh, he was, remember his name was Eliakim, but his name was changed by Pharaoh Necho, all right, which you can go into secular history and read about Pharaoh Necho. Yes, Pharaohs are mentioned in the Bible. So let's go to the book of Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter. 
read a little bit more about this king because I have a list here and I've brought this out before, but dealing with the kings of Judah, okay? After Solomon, you know, the kingdom was split, all right? So we're dealing with the kings of Judah. The final four after Josiah, it was uh, jo jo Jehuaz, all right, he did evil, all right? But we're reading about Jehoiakim, a.k.a. Eliakim, as you can read there, okay? Then we're going to read about Je Je Jehoiakim, all right? Um, and then we're going to read a little bit about Zedekiah, all right? So that prophecy that we just read, Jeremiah told Jehoiakim, all right, none of his seed, all right, would sit on the throne of David to establish it, all right? And then we're going to read about his son who did, all right, for three months sit, all right, but he was eventually put in jail, all right? And then Zedekiah, all right, as well, all right, but it did not prosper, all right? But we cannot take away from the prophecy that Nathan told Solomon, all right, and various other prophecies. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 22nd chapter, all right, 13 through 14. Jeremiah 22, all right, and... uh. 13 it says woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong and use it his neighbor's service without wages and give it him not for his work so this is what uh jehoiakim was doing okay he was being a demon all right putting uh, uh extra labor on jake okay uh, uh you know uh putting wicked extra taxes so that he can have luxury houses and and, and just be an asshole man the, uh, it, it said that said I will build me a wide house in a large chamber and cut it him out windows and it is sealed with cedar and painted with uh, ver vermilion so this is what Jehoiakim did okay he did total uh, evil man he put hell on Jake and Jeremiah was sent to curse him out now in these times you got the same thing going on whereas you had these particular men all right who you would call rulers in, in Israel telling Jake all right, well, we're not going to be taken down. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. I got all of these plans. We're going to build this. We're going to build that. And then when we rebuke them for it, Ezekiel rebuked Jake for that as well. When we rebuke them for it, you pretty much say that we're hating. Well, Jeremiah had to go through the same thing. Okay, he was called a tree. He was called a sellout. All right, let's go to Jeremiah 4 and 5. We're just reading about Jehoiakim, a.k.a. Eliakim which was uh, the son of Josiah, who, who did sit on the throne of David, but he did evil. Okay, Jeremiah 4. Let's see here, 4 and 5, is that what I wanted? That's not what I want. Uh, let's get Jeremiah 22, 18 through 19. It's lucky. I'm tripping. Jeremiah 22, 18 through 19. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or Ah, my sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, Ah, his glory. All right, because when Josiah died, that's what they, they were. They were lamenting because he did right in the eyes of the Lord, although he had a slip up at the end. But that was the Lord. All right. Pretty much taking him uh, uh, away from the destruction that was coming, all right, because the Egyptians, okay, were getting ready to uh, ride, okay, so it says, he shall be buried with the burial of an ass drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem, okay, now, let's see here, and that's ultimately what happened, now, going back to this point, in Jeremiah 36 and 30, okay, really quick, this is what Jeremiah told him, therefore thus said the Lord, all right, of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he, he shall uh, have none to sit up on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day of heat, all right, and in the frost of the night, all right, which leads us to his son, all right, Jeconiah, all right, we'll go back to Jeremiah uh, 22, and we'll just jump to the 30th verse, all right, let's see here, all 
I just jump to the point. This is uh, Jeconiah, all right, the son of Jehoiakim. All right, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 22 and 30, Write ye this man childless, all right? He's not going to have no child. A man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David, ruling any more in, uh, in Judah. All right, so this is cutting off Jehoiakim in his seed from sitting upon the throne of David, all right? Because Jeconiah, which is Jehoiakim's son, if you follow me, Jehoiakim, whose name was Eliakim, had a son named Jeconiah, all right? And as we read in this chart, he did evil, okay? When you read about it, at 18 years of age, Je Je Jehoiakim, all right, was enthroned by Judah's conquering, uh, conqueror Babylon. His father, King Jehoiakim, was judged rebellious, and Babylon's king, Nebuchadnezzar, probably hoped Jehoiakim would be more submissive. He wasn't. In response, Nebuchadnezzar attacked Jerusalem and easily conquered it. He deported everyone of value, which that was prophesied. Isaiah told Hezekiah, who's, who's in the lineage of David, he told him what? All right, uh, your your uh, your seed are going to be eunuchs in Babylon, and that's where you get the story of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right, but that's another uh, lesson for another time. It says he deported everyone and everything of value, all the treasuries from the palace of the temple, all the nobility and educated people, thus David, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the military. Only the poorest peasants were left. Nebuchadnezzar placed. All right, Jehoiachin's uncle, all right, Zedekiah, which was another son, all right, of Josiah, okay, as king over those few remaining. Therefore, all right, fulfilling the prophecy that no descendant of Jehoiachin would be king of Judah. So that prophecy that you all are bringing out, all right, which then you try to flip it and say, well, David's going to sit on the throne. No. No, 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 no. You all just don't understand the Bible at the end of the day. And you've been running around with these narratives and now you're cut and you're caught. All right. And this is more for edification. This ain't to cut you. All right. And we're going to keep going. We got more. All right. It says. Um, Je Je Jehoiakim was taken to Babylon and put in prison where he spent 37 years. All right. At that time, Babylon's new king released Jehoiakim from prison and gave him a job. All right. In a government service until his death. All right. So the next ruler who sat on the throne of David was Zedekiah. OK, Zedekiah. All right. Now, his name was changed as well. As a matter of fact, let's get that. All right. Showing you that the influence of the heathen were there. All right, pretty much after uh, uh, Josiah. All right, although some of them wanted to rebel and had, but they were off. They weren't in the spirit. Josiah was the last one that was in good graces with the heavenly Father to sit on the throne of David. Okay, at that time. All right, so let's go to uh, was that Second Kings? I believe. Let's see, Second Kings twenty four. See seventeen. Around there. Yep. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king in his stead and changed his name to Zedekiah. Okay. So Zedekiah. All right. Uh, uh, was set up pretty much by the king of Babylon. All right. But Zedekiah still had a mind to rebel and not follow the prophecy. All right, because the prophecy was that, look, what's that in Jeremiah, the 25th chapter, I believe. We go get to the point about who's going to sit on the throne of David, because that's the question. Well, who is going to sit on the throne of David? Is David himself going to be the one that 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 forwards the throne of David forever and ever and ever? We'll see. Because, see, first of all, you, you, you all will say, well, no one's going to sit on the throne of David. All right. But then once you start bringing out them precepts, then, oh, David, oh, David's going to sit on the throne of David. See, then I'll go to Ezekiel 37. They don't understand it. <laughs> All right. 
but they don't understand it. Jeremiah 25 and 11 says what? And 10, moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom, okay? And the voice of the bride and the sound of the millstone and the light of the candle. See, Jake just wanted to chill in Babylon, okay? They just wanted to chill. They wanted to, they, they had the throne of David. They, they were like, look, man, we sovereign, we good. We for the party, for to do this, but they were going off, following idols, doing wickedness, man. Same thing Jake doing today. Following some goddamn Jesus Christ. That's an idol, man. Okay, the Messiah of the Bible is, is Yahweh Shai, man. Jesus Christ is an idol of the heathen. Okay? But when we rebuke that, pretty much we're called haters. So what we're telling you is the same thing Jeremiah is telling you. Okay? And this whole land shall be desol desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Okay? So that was the that was the judgment, man. But Jake Zedekiah didn't want to listen. Let's read a little bit about him. Jeremiah. See? Jeremiah 38. 18. But if this is Jeremiah's cursing him out trying to give him counsel the king was subject to the prophet okay the prophet is the top <laughs> that's the one the heavenly father's dealing with man all right but if thou will not go forth to the king of babylon's princes then shall this city be given into the hand of the chaldeans and they shall burn it with fire and thou shall not escape out of their hand and the edomites helped them and zedekiah the king said unto jeremiah i'm afraid of the jews See, he worked in the interest of the people and what they wanted and what they deemed uh, uh, acceptable and, and not what the Heavenly Father deemed acceptable. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Happening in Israel to this day. All right. Lest they deliver me into their hands and they mock me. So he feared Jake. He didn't fear the Lord. But Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech the Lord. All right. Beseech thee. I beseech thee, all right, let me start over. But Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver thee. Obey, I beseech thee, the voice of the Lord, which I speak unto thee, all right? So the Lord was speaking through Jeremiah, all right, which I speak unto thee. So it shall be well unto thee, and, thou so, and thy soul shall live. But if thou refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord hath showed me. All right. And behold, all the women that are left in the kings of Judah house shall be brought forth into the king of Babylon. And those women shall say, thy friends have set thee uh, on and have prevailed against thee and thy feet are sunk. So basically he's telling them y'all going to be destroyed. Women too. Y'all going to be taken down. Right. But Zedekiah did not want to listen, man. Okay. Jeremiah 32. Okay. Jeremiah 32 and 3 for the king. All right. So this is when Jeremiah is prophesying. All right. For the king of Judah has shut him up saying, wherefore dost thou prophesy and say, thus said the Lord, behold, I will give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon. All right. And he shall take it. And Zedekiah, the king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of the Chaldeans, man. So what did they do? All right. After Jeremiah, you know, uh, uh, you know, pretty much prophesied all of those words. Let's see here. They pretty much threw him in jail. So he's saying, why are you telling me that, you know, the, the, the heavenly father is going to take take us down? You hate us. You 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 ain't right. Yada, yada, yada. Right. Let's go to Jeremiah 29. I'm just getting these points real quick. Jeremiah 29 and 8. For thus saith the Lord God, all right, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your uh, dreams, which he calls to be dreamed. All right. We're going to prosper here in Babylon. We're going to do. No. All right. That wasn't what the heavenly father wanted. All right. So what was the judgment? All right. Of uh, of 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 Zedekiah. All right. All right, the judgment of Zedekiah is in Jeremiah 52. 
and 10. And the king of Babylon slew, all right, the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also the princes of Judah and, and Riblah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison to the days of his death. All right. So this fulfills the prophecy. All right. That none of these men would sit on the throne of David and prosper it. Right. So what they're saying is that first they'll say, well, nobody's going to sit on the throne of David because of what we just read. But what that was saying, that none of the seed of these men. All right. After Josiah starting at uh, uh, Jehoiakim would sit on the throne of David and Zedekiah was the son of Josiah. All right. And he didn't prosper. But who will sit on the throne of David? Because when you go into prophecy, let's get Isaiah nine. Isaiah chapter nine and six for unto us, a child is born. OK, unto us, a son is given and the government shall be up on his shoulders. OK, and that's the priesthood. OK, <laughs> remember Aaron, the priest would bind, you know, the, the, the ephod with the 12 stones on their shoulders. OK, and that represented the, 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 the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, the government's going to be on the shoulders of the high priest, which is Melchizedek. All right. It says. His name shall be called Wonderful, the Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Okay. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And upon the throne of David, okay, and upon his kingdom, to establish it, to order it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord Yahweh will perform this. So there is one who is going to sit on the throne of David to establish it forever. OK, let's go to Jeremiah 33 real quick. Then we'll get the prophecy. Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. OK. I'll just get to the point in 25. Thus saith Yahweh, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if my uh, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. So it's going to be the seed of David, not David himself, who sits on the throne to establish it forever, which is what Nathan promised. OK, what Nathan promised directly to Solomon, I mean, to uh, to uh, uh, um, David. OK, let's see here. That ain't it. That ain't it either. First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, seventeen, maybe. Oh. I bring this out all the time. Now I'm drawing a blank. Let me um. Let's see here. First Chronicles uh, 17 and 11. Salakia. I start at 10. All right. Now, this is um, the Lord's promise to David, the Lord's covenant. This is a covenant that he's making with David. This is an agreement. OK, so is this agreement broken now? See, first you all jump to 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 Jeremiah the 36th chapter to say, well, it said none of his seed will sit on the throne. Well, that was talking about those wicked, rebellious kings. But that does not take away from this. Let's go. First Chronicles 17. And I start at 10. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel and will plant them and they shall dwell in their place and shall not be moved. 
All right. Remember, there was a promise given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's that place, that land. Okay, starting at Jerusalem, it said, Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them anymore as at the beginning. All right. Now, that didn't happen after Solomon. Solomon reigned for 40 years. And since that time, I commanded judges to be over my people Israel. Moreover, I will subdue all thy enemies. Furthermore, I, I tell thee that the Lord will build thee in house. Okay. And it shall come to pass when thy days be expired that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee. See, Nathan is telling David that I'm going to raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, which shall be of thy sons. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me in house and I will establish his throne forever. Read it in the NLT. He is the one who will build a house, a temple for me. And that is a spiritual temple. Solomon for 40 years all right, uh, uh, was able to build the temple, all right, which represents sovereignty, which represents the order of the heavenly father, all right, but the one who's coming is going to build a spiritual temple, okay, but when you read this in the NLT, verse 11, when you die and join your ancestors, I will raise up one of your descendants, one of your sons, okay, which that son would be Solomon, but he would come back in the future, which is why when you get Matthew, the first chapter, what does it say? The ancestors of Yahawashah, the Messiah, the book of the generations of Yahawashah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay? The son of David, the son of Abraham. Hmm. And then it goes through the genealogy because the way that it was written, okay, that one of the descendants of David would be raised up, okay? In this, you see David there in Yahweh Shai's lineage, okay? And boom, if you read down, and Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Yahweh Shai, who was called. Hamashiach, okay, and when you get Luke, okay, Luke, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, and 31, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahweh Shai, this is before he was born, and he shall be great, and he shall be called the son of of the highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David all right <laughs> and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end all right now let's go back okay let's go back to um where were we Jeremiah 33 let's read that again Okay. 25. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant be not with day nor night, and if I have not appointed the ordinance of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. That is a covenant. Okay, when you go, let's go to Psalms 138 or Psalms 132. Okay. Psalms 132. And 10. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away thy face from thine anointed. For the Lord have sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of thy body will I set up thy throne. You see, of the fruit of thy body, meaning he would be a direct descendant of David. This is why Yahawashai's father gives you some insight, okay? And that's what the whole book of Ruth was all about. It was tracking the lineage of the Messiah, 
all right boaz okay was a uh, was a descendant of uh of, of Perez, which is judah's son which is that would be the royal lineage of david and we have videos on that luke chapter 2 okay talks about the messiah's father because it was his biological father even mary herself now they worship mary but mary told you that your father as a matter of fact in this very chapter let's see here when they were basically saying my father is looking for your father is looking for you me and your father is looking for you man Verse 45, Luke 2 and 45. And when they found him, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And when they found him, not. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou uh, thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Your father and I <laughs> have sought thee sorrowing. Mary told you, Luke, uh, uh, I mean, that uh, uh, Joseph was the father. And Joseph, all right, Luke 2 and 4, and Joseph also went up from Galilee unto the city of Nazareth unto the Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem all right which is uh Ephratot, that land that uh came with uh Ruth all right Obed bought that land back redeemed the land all right and that deal came with Ruth all right just a little history then it says um which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David so the Messiah is the seed of david he is the one he himself told you in revelation 22 whether you believe it or not okay i yahweh shai have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david i am the bright and morning star all right he had to come in the flesh to be that sacrifice which isaiah told you he would do that okay for the purpose of, of, of conquering death, raising from the dead and returning back to the right hand side so that he can act as high priest in the heavens and make intercession for us, man, and bring us back to the father, man. OK, now. Let's go back. And read it again. Psalms 132. In 11, the Lord have sworn in truth. He will not turn from it. He will never take it back. Okay. Of the fruit of thy body. We got to keep bringing this out. What does this mean? Okay. I will set up thy throne. And what is that throne? The throne of David. Let's type in throne of David. Throne David. Let's see if we can just get a few precepts. Isaiah 16 and 5, and in mercy shall the throne be established. He shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment and hastening righteousness. Who's going to sit on the throne of David? See, first they'll say, well, nobody's going to sit on the throne. Then once you start hitting them with precepts, then they go and reading and wiggling and flumbling. And then they come up, well, David's going to sit on the throne. Well, we just read that not one of David's descendants David had too much blood on his hand to build the temple. He needed mercy. And that mercy came through Solomon, who built his temple that he wanted to build, but he couldn't build it. Nathan told him no. At first, Nathan was like, all right, go ahead. You know, because you know, Nathan was the prophet. David was the king. Nathan pretty much was like, all right, well, go ahead you know, and, and do, do what the spirit is on you to do. So David was going to build a throne, all right, which is the temple. All right. But what happened? The Lord sent Nathan a, a vision and said, no, your descendant, your, your son is going to be the one to build the temple. But he, he, he put prophecy in there. OK, and David himself in Psalms, the 72nd chapter knows and tells you that his son is going to be the one to do all of these things. And you all don't get it. OK. Let's 
let's see here. That's the one we read. All right, Jeremiah 22 and 30. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for none of his seed shall prosper sitting on the throne of Judah. All right, this was speaking of Jeconiah. All right, and y'all will use that to say, well, nobody's going to sit on the throne. That's, uh, then once you start bringing out what well, a throne of David is, the kingdom, you know, and you start to bring out these scriptures, then they start scrambling. Let's see here. Let's get Psalms uh, 72. Those were good precepts as well. For the sake of time, I'm going to just jump to Psalm 72. All right. Where we at? Psalms. <clears throat> 72 Psalm 72 and 1 a psalm for Solomon and David wrote this psalm give the king thy judgments O God which he's the king and thy righteousness unto the king's son see that the king's son he shall judge thy people with righteousness and thy poor with judgment. The mountain shall bring peace to the people in, a little, in the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save, he, he shall save the children of the needy and break in pieces the oppressor. When did Solomon ever break in pieces the oppressor? David did all of that. David and his mighty man did that. That's how Solomon was able to have 40 years of peace. So who's going to sit on the throne of David? David is telling you his son is going to do all of this. He's saying it right here. He's going to save the children of the needy and break in pieces the oppressor. Is not that what Yahweh is coming to do to deliver us from our enemy? In, in fact, let's get Zechariah 9 real quick. And read that whole chapter because it cuts you. And let's wait real quick. Let's prove that that was David too because when you go to the final uh 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 you know the final um scripture verse 20 it says the prayers of the son of david all right the son of jesse are ended all right <laughs> there you go all right his name shall endure forever he shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence he shall spare the poor and needy king shall fall down before him and bow see his enemy shall lick the dust he shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the the ends of the river unto the other the ends of the earth solomon only uh, uh ruled let's get second kings the fourth chapter second kings four solomon only ruled it's around 20 First Kings four, Salakia. First Kings four, and this is pretty much all just off the top. So, excuse me, but I just had to hit it real quick, man. First Kings four and twenty one, and Solomon reigned all over the kingdoms of the from the river unto the land of the Philistines unto the border of Egypt. All right, they brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And w when you look at it, that was the promised land. <laughs> that was the promised land, man. Okay. But that was only for 40 years of peace. There's a, there's a promise that the son of David would do this forever. Okay. So this prophet, this, this scripture we're reading in Psalms, the 72nd chapter could not be talking about Solomon at the time that there was 40 years of peace. Okay? Let's see here. Verse 8, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, 
from the from the river unto the ends of the earth. Solomon didn't do that. Okay. Also, there's prophecies, man. Micah, the fifth chapter. In the second verse, but thou Bethlehem, all right, Ephrata, all right, and I would love to ask you all, what is that? All right, though thou be little, all right, among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall, uh, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from old, from everlasting. And a lot of you <laughs> think that the Messiah just shows up in the New Testament. No, he's he's from the beginning. All right, but that you you have to be able to see that in the scriptures, in the spirit. But you can't see it, all right, because you don't have the hidden manna. All right, is this talking about David? So this is speaking about David, huh? Is this speaking about David? Let's get Zechariah, Zechariah the ninth chapter and the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, having uh, salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass. All right, and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. When did when did David do this? Or is he going to do it in the future? This is speaking of Yahawashai, man. Because Yahawashai did that. Okay, he came lowly upon an ass. Matthew 21 and four, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto the meek and sitting upon an ass. And when you read that, that's what he did. Okay. And he did that. <laughs> it says Yahweh Shah's triumphant entry. And he came lowly that time on an ass, but he's coming back in a chariot. <laughs> All right. That's what he did. He told them, go, go get an ass. All right. And it said all that was done to fulfill that, man. In the, the verse six, and the disciples went and did as Yahweh Shai commanded them and brought the ass and the coat and put on them clothes and they uh, set him thereon. And that's what happened. All right. He cleared the temple. But anyway. That's pretty much it. You know, I don't want to go too too much deeper. I mean, you know, there is someone who's going to sit on the throne of David. All right. And it's going to be the throne of David. But who is going to be the one who establishes it forever and ever and ever? All right. David himself says the lord said unto my lord okay the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand until i make thine enemies thy footstool psalms 110 and 1 the lord said unto my lord sit at my right hand so david is not on the right hand of the most high acting as mediator and intercessor and high priest david is not melchizedek okay but it is David's throne. You see? Let's see. I was going to get something else. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Ezekiel. Thirty-seven. Now, with all of that, this is another place where they'll jump. All right, and we'll finish it off here. And anyone who watches my videos, you know, you know, we always go through this. It's one of my favorite topics. And this one is a little unorthodox because it's off the head, but it's just history and prophecy, man. So bear with me. All right, Ezekiel 37. All right, this is when we get brought back to the land, okay? The land that was promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? So we're going to have the new covenant. All right, we're not going to go off anymore. But right here in verse 24, it says, And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. Who's the shepherd? Okay. <laughs> David shall be king over them because he's the head of the church. He's the rock. 
okay? Just like Yahweh Shai had 12 disciples and Peter was the rock. He said, upon this rock, starting with Peter, will I build my church, okay? So David will be king over them, but we cannot ignore prophecy that one of David's descendants is going to be the one who sits on the throne, all right, so that the, the, the throne of David is forwarded forever. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, okay? And they shall all have one shepherd, and they shall walk also in my judges and, avert, and observe my statutes and do them. This is the new covenant. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Okay. And going back to the, to the, uh, What is it, 2 Samuel 12? Okay, yeah, 2 Samuel 7. Okay. I start at 5. And go tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, shall thou build me in a house for me to dwell in? Because David wanted to build a temple. Okay. It said, whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. And that was the tabernacle that Moses built. <laughs> all right. But have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. All right. And it says that in all the places wherein I've walked with the children of Israel. All right. Spake I a word. All right. Unto the tribes whom I commanded to feed my people saying, why build ye uh, not me a house of cedar? All right. Because the Lord always he wanted a temple to be set up in the earth. All right. But as you read down. He's saying, say this to David. You read that in verse eight. Now, therefore, so say unto my servant, David, thus saith the Lord God of hosts. I took thee from the sheep coat from following the sheep to be ruler over my people, Israel. All right. And when you jump to verse 10, moreover, I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and more and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them. All right. Any more as before time. And since the times that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, I have caused thee to rest from all thine enemies. All right, he subdued his enemies. Also, Yahweh telleth thee that he will make thee in house. Okay? And it's all based upon what's in the heavens, man. Okay? And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. Okay? Okay? which shall proceed out of thy bowels and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father. He shall be my son. And if he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. That never happened to Solomon. Okay. That happened to Yahweh Shai. Okay. Who is going to forward the throne of David forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, man. Okay? He's going to be the head of the 144,000. He's going to be at the head of it. All right? But remember, at the head of that will be the 12. And who's the head? Disciple. Peter, which is David, man. Okay? The governor. <laughs> All right? Who, 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 who ultimately, man... At the end of the day, if you all can't get it, it just ain't for you, man. So I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, y'all are edified. On to the next. Shalom.